All right. Well, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome everyone to the kickoff of the first ever internship and apprenticeship week hosted by Tallow. Now we are so excited to be welcoming students and professionals from all over the country. Uh, but before we get started, I want to share a few general reminders before we jump into the panel that everyone is here for this evening. Now, I am your host for this kickoff event. My name is Sarah Lynn, and I'm Talos Director of Workforce and Military Initiatives. Before I share a really exciting prize that we have and that we'll be giving away at the end of this kickoff event, I do want to share a few technology reminders. Now, I see that there are People funneling in right now, which is really exciting. We know that you're here. We're so glad that you're taking time out of your day to join this kickoff event. However, we are in Zoom webinar. So you won't have access to video or audio at any point throughout the next hour, this kickoff event. However, we will have an interactive activity in Kahoot starting shortly. We hope you'll engage with that. And there will be opportunities for you to ask questions and engage with us in the Q&A box and the chat box along the bottom of your screen. Best part is that towards the end of this hour long launch session, we will have live Q&A with our panelists. So if there's any questions that we don't answer about internships and apprenticeships, what are they? Uh, what kinds of opportunities do our panelists, companies and organizations have or what general tips, tricks, and uh, recommendations do they have for you today? So we'll have time to answer all of your questions or a good portion of them. But on that note, um, or actually, let me share the prize before I introduce our, our first moderator of this kickoff event, my colleague, Emily Todd. Before Emily comes on, I do wanna share that if you stay engaged throughout the next hour, we are gonna have a prize at the very end and prizes throughout all of the next two weeks. And today's prize is actually gonna be an HD Fire tablet. So one of the participants in this hour long session will be given that prize, again, an HD Fire tablet. So stay tuned, uh, it's only an hour and we're really excited for what's to come in the next two weeks. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to my colleague now, Emily Todd, so she can engage with us and start answering the first question we need to answer. What are internships? What are apprenticeships? Uh, before we get started. So welcome, Emily, and thanks for joining us. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, really quickly, we're going to go over a little bit about what internships and apprenticeships are. Um, and with that, we're going to play a short little game together. So I'm sure many of you have used Kahoot before. Um, and part of this might go along with that prize that Sarah was mentioning earlier. We're putting the link in the chat, but you can also scan this QR code or go to kahoot.it and enter this game pin. Um, to register. We're going to go through a few questions together before we get started um, and learn a little about internships and apprenticeships, and there'll be some questions that you can answer. So we're going to give you um, a couple of seconds to join. And again, you can scan the QR code. You can go to kahoot.it and type in this game pin. And uh, you can also just cl uh, click the link from the chat that my colleague Alexa put on here. And this is just gonna be really general about what internships and apprenticeships are. Uh, we're gonna learn a little bit about the differences, um, those types of opportunities, and um, also just kind of test your knowledge of what you already know about internships and apprenticeships. So I'll give you about 30 more seconds to join. All righty, let's get started. So a lot of you in here today, and you can still join if you're not there yet. Um, the game pin will show up at the bottom. But um, first, we're going to go through a few slides together and a few questions to see what you already know. 
So um, in this short little lesson, we're going to talk about what internships and apprenticeships are. We're going to learn about skills you might need for finding or succeeding in your first internship or an apprenticeship. And we're going to take the steps towards building your digital portfolio that will help you find internships and apprenticeships. Uh, I work with students every day that use Tallow to find these types of opportunities, but oftentimes I get the question, what is an internship? That's why I wanted to start this activity with this. So let us know. How familiar are you with internships and apprenticeships? Do you know a lot about them? Do you know how to find them? There's no wrong answer here. This is just for me to gauge where you are. Awesome. So we have a lot of like in the middle people that um, agree, they know some, and then some that are kind of neutral. And um, that is totally fine. Hopefully after this session today, you will know a lot more about internships and apprenticeships. You know how to find internships and apprenticeships. So again, uh, tell me how you feel about that now. Uh, later and all throughout this event uh, series, you're going to learn a lot about how to find these opportunities. A nice little bell curve here. So a lot of you are really neutral or um, actually a significant portion don't know how to find internships and apprenticeships. So we have some great tools for you to continue to use um, that we'll talk about today. I'm interested in becoming an intern or apprentice. So let us know, are you looking for one of these types of opportunities, whether that's now or in the future? Um, how much are you looking for these types of opportunities? Strongly agree. Over a hundred of you are like, yes, I want to be an intern. Yes, I want to be an apprentice. That is awesome. You are in the right place. So in case you are unfamiliar with the definitions of what internships and apprenticeships are, both opportunities are geared towards entry-level workers and students, and um, they provide you experiences in a field that you might be interested in. There are some differences between internships and apprenticeships that I even learned a lot about, and I have to say, Tallow has a ton of blogs on this subject, so if you really want to dive in and learn more, definitely check out our website. Um, but traditionally, an internship is kind of like a career trial run. They provide you with legitimate work experience while helping you weed out jobs that just don't suit you. They are um, really valuable for networking, so making a great connection to then maybe get a job after you finish your education, um, rather than learning industry-specific skills. So you might hear of a lot of students that get internships while they're um, maybe in college as part of their required major as a way to kind of try out that field. And apprenticeships are typically full-time positions and even pay you um, decent sal starting salaries. And that really depends on the industry and the position. They are a lot longer than internships. Internships are more short-term. Um, and you can expect a greater focus on teaching you specific skills you need for that job. Because the goal of an apprenticeship is then to take on a full-time role once you earn those skills. So now let's take a little quiz. Is an internship unpaid? And that was a little quick one. Most of you got that right. So there are some paid and unpaid internships out there. Um, you have to do some research when applying for the opportunity. Uh, but I think a lot more providers are moving towards paid internships these days. Is an internship or an apprenticeship more focused on trade skills? Is an internship or apprenticeship focused on trade skills? These are fast. Wow, so many of you got that right. So again, in, uh, apprenticeship is where you are learning those hands-on skills needed for that exact role. Is an internship long-term or short-term? Y'all are so fast. I'm very impressed. Um, yes, an internship is more short-term. A lot of times they move with the calendar of the school year. So it could be a semester long or a year long. Great job. Leaderboard has changed up on that one. What kind of work environment do you experience as an intern? Is it more hands-on or office-based? Okay, so we're split half and half here. So if you think about those definitions, we went back to um, an internship is typically in a more corporate setting, in an office where you might be doing a variety of different jobs more of that trial run where you're networking and meeting different people, whereas an apprenticeship um, would be in a more hands-on type of environment uh, where you're learning those skills. This one is open-ended, and I believe you have like a minute to answer it. We would love to know what are your goals for attending this event um, throughout Internship and Apprenticeship Week. 
So you can type your answer in there. One goal might be to learn more about internship opportunities for high school students, for example. Um, but let us know what is your goal for attending this event. We're so happy you're here. And this helps us to um, better inform our events and make sure we're answering your questions and helping you to be successful. So many answers in that very short amount of time. You guys are awesome. Oh, I thought I was going to show some of them. So let's talk about some quick tips for this event and this week. Um, you're going to hear some from really some really awesome speakers throughout Internship and Apprenticeship Week and during this kickoff event. And whether you are in your first internship or apprenticeship or just starting to explore your exciting career options by participating in this event series, we are happy you're here and you're going to gain so much valuable information to really jumpstart your future. Uh, if you don't already have a Tylo digital portfolio, you're going to hear about them all throughout this event series, but definitely go ahead and sign up and create one. We have an awesome tool that can help you find internships and apprenticeships where you are um, or even remotely. And I also recommend researching. Uh, if you hear of an awesome company that you'd love to intern for or be an apprentice for throughout this week, um, go to their website, go and find out um, more about what they do and opportunities that might be nearby you. Use Tallow um, to also learn about them through the Explore Organizations tab. And the last part is just to stay connected. I've attended so many of Tallow's events and so often the speakers say, reach out to me, um, add me um, as a connection, and I'm happy to help you or um, mentor you or um, review your resume even. We have some really awesome, passionate speakers here throughout um, these sessions. So take people up on that, find mentors, reach out, ask and answer questions, and stay connected to the people who really inspire you. That is all I have for today. I hope this taught you a little bit more about what internships and apprenticeships are, and I'm super excited for the rest of this event. I'm gonna pass it back over to Sarah. Thank you so much, Emily. Job well done. We've answered that all too important question. I hope that gives all of our attendees a baseline understanding of what to expect not only uh, this week and throughout the next, just to be clear, it is called Internship and Apprenticeship Week, but because of the amount of opportunities, employers and organizations that reached out, it's actually two weeks long through September 15th. Now, to hear all about the activities, the Ask Me Everythings, the closing event, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Tallow's Director of User Growth and Community, Jason Mannion, to showcase what you have ahead of you in the next two weeks before we jump into that panel. Thanks so much, Sarah. I really appreciate it. Hi, everyone. I am thrilled to be here today. We've been planning internship and apprenticeship week for so long, and it's finally here. So I'm really thrilled to kick it off with you all. Uh, and so as Sarah mentioned, I'm the director of community at Tallow, and so I'm going to share my screen and give you a walkthrough because we are hosting internship and apprenticeship week on the Tallow community. So I'm going to give you just a quick overview of what the community is all about if you haven't already jumped in, and then I'll show you how to navigate to internship and apprenticeship week where you can connect with all of these amazing companies and opportunities. And so this is the Tallow community. It's a feature of Tallow where our members can connect with each other and also companies and colleges, professional organizations. And this is where you can post uh, questions, discussions, start topics around things that you're passionate about in education and career. And so we have a lot of different content from our members, from our partners, and this is a way for you to connect. Uh, we also host a top influencer competition every month. And so if you earn the most points on the community, we have prizes every month. And so internship and apprenticeship week is something that we've been planning with our internal TALO team for months now. But we've also been planning this out with you all, with members of TALO. So we sent out surveys asking, what is it that you want out of internship and apprenticeship week? And you responded back. You told us that you want real opportunities and you want to connect with real companies. And so we made a whole channel on the community dedicated just to that. 
So I'm going to list off some of the partners that we have participating. All of these partners have opportunities and workshops and part of this event that you can attend uh, throughout internship and apprenticeship week. So I've listed them all out. There's a few, so I'm going to read them, but Volvo, Stride, Lockheed Martin, Aflac, Net America, Constructors Association of Western Pennsylvania, IBM, and Caterpillar all have opportunities for students and young professionals just like you. And so when you navigate to internship and apprenticeship week, you'll see all the content. We've pulled it all together in one place, so you'll be able to access that. And we'll be dropping the link to this uh, internship and apprenticeship week channel into the chat. But this is a place that you can connect with all of those opportunities. So there's a place for you to record a video. Like Emily said, we want to hear from you. So this is a place where you can share your voice and tell us what you want. So you can describe your dream internship or tell us about what industries that you're interested in. What are some of your dream companies? What are some of the uh, industries that you wanna get involved in? Or tell us what you're hoping to gain or learn from internship and apprenticeship week. So you can submit a video and you can earn a digital badge by submitting a video. Our team will review it and uh, check out your content. We also have featured opportunities so you'll be able to see some of these amazing things that you can participate in during internship and apprenticeship week. We have uh, Ask Me Everythings with Volvo interns. I'll show you. Where we have an intern from Volvo that's sharing their experience. And so you can post your questions to them on the community and they'll be responding on September 8th. Uh, we also have a career launch party, uh, sorry, career launch program with Lockheed Martin, uh, where actual Lockheed Martin staff are hosting workshops about skills and uh, different uh, professional tips and tricks to get involved with companies like Lockheed Martin. And so there's so much to get involved with. I hope you dive more into internship and apprenticeship week where you can get involved, but we're so excited to have you. And so I'm going to pass it back off to Sarah, who's now going to uh, do our panel with our, our partners. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jason. And again, to Emily for helping kick off internship and apprenticeship week. As you just saw, we have a lot of exciting activities, workshops, ask me everything, and those spotlight sessions to close out, not to mention prizes. So it was really helpful to all the attendees that you took the time to share with us in that Kahoot. I love those interactive activities to see what you're here for, what questions we can help answer. Uh, and without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this panel. How it's gonna work, attendees, is that we have some planned questions that I'm gonna ask to our four panelists. And then with about 10 minutes left in the hour, I'm gonna wrap it up so that we can pull some of the questions out of the Q&A box directly from you to make sure we're answering all the questions we can about what you're looking for, what you don't currently know, uh, so we can fill those knowledge gaps for you. Now, I'd love to introduce the four panelists, uh, and we are going to begin with a round robin. So I'll introduce them by name and employer uh, or organization, but I will allow them to explain a little bit about their role and the company or organization that they're representing today. We have Alex Rose with Aflac. We have Griff Rome with Caterpillar. We have John Short with Net America and we have Shelly Myrand with IBM. So let's kick things off. We're gonna go ahead and if you don't mind, Alexa, we can remove this slide just so we have all of our great panelists up. Perfect, we're a little bit bigger now and personal. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'd love to kick things off, like I said, with a quick round robin. So if everyone doesn't mind taking a minute to introduce themselves, uh, their role and the company or organization they're representing today, Alex, you're first in my grid box, if you don't mind kicking us off. Thank you so much, Sarah, and thank you for having me on today. I'm so excited to be speaking with all of you. My name is Alex Rose, and I am with Aflac. I am a data analyst for Aflac, but I'm actually heading up our early talent organization. So we are for sales side of Aflac. And I'm really excited because I get to work with the interns directly. I get to plan out their 
calendars, their activities, and I can't wait to talk to all of you about it today. Thank you for joining us, Alex. We appreciate the uh, introduction. Let's see, next up in my grid box, I have John, if you don't mind continuing our panel. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm John Short. I'm the Senior Director for Apprenticeship and Career Development with NetAmerica. Uh, NetAmerica is a woman-owned company, and they have a workforce development department. Uh, I direct a youth apprenticeship initiative grant, which the point of it is to get youth into apprenticeship. Between the ages of 16 and 21, we work in the IT, energy, and healthcare fields. Thank you, John. Appreciate you being here. All right, Griff, you're next up in my box, if you don't mind introducing yourself and the company yeah. representing today. Yeah, thank you so much. Griff Riom for everybody online. Thanks for having me. And uh, with Caterpillar Inc., I'm the service workforce development manager, uh, mainly advocating for our dealers that are covering the uh, territory and industries throughout the globe. Uh, technical uh, skill sets and opportunities are a key focus for us. And my career actually started as an apprentice uh, almost 20 years ago. Uh, so I feel like I'm dating myself a bit, but also grew my career through internships too. So this is an op awesome opportunity to talk about how that all connects for you as future employees in the job market. Fantastic. Thank you, Griff. And last but not least, Shelly, if you don't mind introducing yourself. Hello, everyone. Pleasure to be here with you all. Um, my name is Shelly Myrins. I am the IBM Z Systems and Linux One Client and Academic Initiative Skills Leader for North America, India, and Japan. Um, and what I get to do is not only work internally with um, all of our great folks internally, all of our subject matter experts. Uh, if you don't know what IBM stands for, it's International Business Machines, <laughs> running the world with technology. And um, so what I get to do is not only work inside IBM and understand our apprenticeship programs, but I get to work with all of our clients. And there are thousands um, that IBM works with um, because we are have you know lots of technology and the brand that I support is these systems so it's mainframes if you are in computer science or enterprise computing you may have heard of mainframes uh, Z systems and so I come tonight to talk about not only what IBM internally but I also run a program uh, an apprenticeship program for all of our clients um, that they are able to take um, ability to be part of. So I have lots of lots of good news for you guys. And Shelly, you just led a perfect segue into our first question. Thank you for introducing yourself and your role. Uh, I think your role is so unique and especially what you said, not only are you representing IBM, but apprenticeship opportunities across all of your clients. So our first question is a bit of a general one, maybe hard to answer on behalf of IBM and all of your clients. But a lot of our attendees are wondering what a typical day might look like for someone who's an apprentice. Um, and just so you know, you were probably tuning in for our activity, um, but a lot of students were kind of wondering the difference between an internship and a, an apprenticeship, one being more in the office, one being more technical, if you could speak to that at all. Perfect. So from an apprenticeship standpoint, um, in IBM, as well as what we deliver for clients, um, our framework is the same. So it's an apprenticeship program is an earn while you learn program. And so you get to have the best of both worlds, right? Because the clients ex don't expect you to know it all right when you walk in the door. So it's a great opportunity for you to really get in and learn as you grow. For our apprenticeship programs, both internally with IBM, as well as um, the apprenticeship program that we are running uh, for our clients, um, there's a really easy kind of process. And for us, you really go out and take a, you, you click on the link, and I'll put some here in, in the chats in a moment. But you can click on the link and determine, you know, kind of what is Z, what, what is mainframe? And so you can, I'll send a video and you can take a look at that. And then you say, yeah, I want to do this. You can go to IBM's website or you can go to Franklin Apprenticeship website, who IBM teams with for our clients. And you can read more about it there. But then you take a kind of a self uh, career fit 
uh, assessment that we have, and it will really tell you if this is a career path that you know is is something you should you know travel down the path of. And from there, then um, with us, you take some initial training that's no cost to you at all. Uh, you get to learn and see if this is really what you're looking for. And then uh, you are uh, introduced uh, to our clients. You get to interview with them. And you, you know, if they select you to be hired, then you are fully employed with our clients and or IBM. And so with that, it's a typical day of work. So you work for either IBM or one of our uh, clients, which are all you know top Fortune 500 companies, and they you work for them. You're learning, you're growing, and you also have education that you will complete um, along the way. So um, and with IBM, you'll get education, but then our I our SMEs talk with you and share and you know teach you the content and really bring that to life. Um, so it's not a boot camp. It's not, you know, anything like that. It's truly a year long program to help skill you up um, in your journey for this new career. That was a great overview, Shelly. And you said a lot of important things, skilling up, earn while you learn. Uh, we'll talk more about those topics and themes throughout the next two weeks, but uh, thank you, Shelly. I do wanna mention, uh, she mentioned Franklin Apprenticeships and we dropped that link um, to all of our attendees in the chat. So make sure you pull that link out, put it in your browser for later and keep in touch with that chat. We're gonna be dropping a lot of great resources there throughout the next hour. Thank you, Shelly. I'm now gonna go over next to Griff with Caterpillar. And Griff, I'd love to get some insights from you on what skills and training do not only interns, but also apprentices uh, gain from participating in an opportunity with Caterpillar? Yeah, certainly. So one of the big things that's uh, great about apprenticeships and internships, this is really a long form interview, both for the individual and the employer too. So you really start working on creating that relationship and creating that partnership, gets you exposure to the industries that you're interested in, as well as possibly highlights you to other areas of opportunity that maybe you didn't know about and then kind of uh, shed some light on that. In terms of responsibility and skill set you gain, I mean, it's on the job training. When we have an apprentice working in one of our service shops, they're working right alongside a mentor that's showing them how to do things that for anybody that grew up, maybe helping their uh, parents out in the garage, you know, holding the flashlight, then that graduates to grab me a tool. And then it graduates onto, hey, help me, you know, perform these tasks. It's the same thing in the service shops as well. Uh, you know, working on the product, supporting the product that's so essential for keeping daily alive for us uh, there, as well as, um, you know, this expands to other areas, not just in our service shops, but we also have internships and apprenticeships in marketing, parts distribution too. So pretty much anything you would be doing in the job once you graduate from schooling, that's what we would have our interns and apprentices doing. So you get that real world experience and that exposure that's so essential to being successful in the space. Well said. Thank you, Griff. And it's exciting to hear you just kind of mention that there's opportunities like the ones we're talking about this week across, it sounds like, all different departments at Caterpillar, not what immediately comes to mind um, when you think Caterpillar as a brand. So that's really exciting to hear. Oh, yeah. Perfect. All right. Over to you next, Alex. Uh, my next question, and again, Alex is with Affleck. Uh, the question I have for you, Alex, is how does a high school student or even college student, maybe a young professional, get involved with Affleck and the various opportunities that you have? That is a wonderful question. So I would say for a young professional that's interested in getting to know Affleck, getting connected with Affleck, the best way is reaching out and connecting over LinkedIn. You can definitely connect with me. I've already seen some come through, but also applying online. So we do have a link that will drop in the chat. I think something that's very special about ours is that you don't need a college degree for internships or a full-time sales role. You do not require a college degree at all. Um, so what's really cool is that that's at all levels. We promote internally for management that's not required. We really want to invest in our interns and full-time sales associates. So if you're starting young, you decide college isn't for you, um, you are able to go into our full-time program. But for the interns, we want to promote you. We want to up-level all of those interns, make sure they get all the skills necessary. Um, I think it's really great to have that exposure to other professions, similar to um, what we were saying about interns get to see a little bit different of careers in those areas. 
um, our interns get to go out selling to different businesses. So you get to see all different industries. So many focus on a niche. If you know what kind of industry you're looking for and you wanna network with those professionals, we had an intern a while back that was interested in becoming a veterinarian. So she decided to target vets. She made so many connections throughout her AFLAC internship that afterwards she had many offers from vet offices because she took those opportunities to focus on a niche, really work on her networking skills and professional sales skills. So if you're wanting to reach out, wanting to learn more about our AFLAC sales programs, then definitely go ahead and click on that apply link or connect with me personally on LinkedIn. Well, thank you so much, Alex. And we've went ahead and dropped uh, a link that uh, Alex provided earlier to us in the chat. So again, please pull out those great resources as we uh, move through the rest of our panel questions. But we've now done one round of questions. Thank you, everyone. We're hearing a lot of great information. Uh, excuse me, haven't done the full round. John, I'm missing you. And I'm really excited about John's question in particular because I hate to put you on blast, John, but he admitted earlier that he's been both an apprentice and an intern before. Am I right on that, John? Perfect. You are 100% correct. When I graduated from high school, I uh, served an electrical apprenticeship uh, in Ireland. And by the time I was 22, I was a licensed electrician. Um, when I was 23, I volunteered in East Africa for two years teaching um, Ethiopian refugees an, an electrical apprenticeship. Came to the States, went to college, and as part of my college career, I took an internship with the late, great Senator Paul Sarbanes on Capitol Hill uh, in the US Senate. So I do have um, both experiences and, you know, having and working currently in apprenticeship. Um, I, I know that, you know, everybody wants to know, how do I get an internship? How do I get into an apprenticeship? We will talk about that a little bit later on. But I know, Sarah, you have a question for me. Yeah, and I think you led into it perfectly with your experience. And thank you for talking to us a little bit about your background. It's always exciting to hear. Um, John, what skills would you say are important for an intern, an apprentice? Obviously, you know personally. So what skills do you think are most important across those two opportunities? So you, you need to have a curiosity and a willingness to learn. Um, that is very, very important for either an internship or an apprenticeship. Let's talk about some basic stuff, a driver's license. Is your internship going to be local or do you have to travel? Is your apprenticeship local or do you have to travel? Get a driver's license. Um, dress code. When I was working, uh, when I was interning with Senator Sarbanes, the office manager brought all of the interns together and said, you don't represent yourself. Don't ever forget that while you're interning here, you represent the senator. Okay, point taken. Um, dress appropriately. When you meet a hiring manager or an HR director, either for an internship or for an apprenticeship, ask the question, what is the appropriate dress code? For example, you could work in a restaurant and if you are on the, in the back of the house, you're going to dress differently than if you're a server in the front of the house. It's, it's just that, that simple. Um, never be afraid to ask a question. The look on an internship or an apprenticeship as an opportunity. It was mentioned earlier on that um, the skills that you would need include being easy to work with. Can you play well in the sandbox? And we'll get into this later on of why that is so important when you're either in an internship or an apprenticeship. So the skills, you know, willingness to learn, uh, be on time. If you're not going to be on time, call ahead. Let your employer know you're not going to be there. Um, dress appropriately. Uh, play well in the sandbox. Those are the essential skills for you to, to be successful in any apprenticeship or uh, internship. 
in any career. That's just great right. professional advice across the board. Um, so thank you, John. Appreciate that. And again, talking about your background a bit. Uh, all right, so we have one additional round of questions for everyone. We're making great time. Then we'll do one more round, Robin, before we open it up uh, to our audience questions. And I'm sure y'all have seen a lot have been coming through as y'all have been answering your questions. So it's sparking more interest, more curiosity, if you will, John. Um, and so let's head back over to Griff. Griff, we're wondering with Caterpillar specifically, what type of responsibilities do interns and apprentices have if they were to be an intern or an apprentice with Caterpillar? Yeah, certainly. So I'm just going to do a shameless plug real quick. If you scan this QR code and then you click on the link that says see open positions in that uh, platform, you'll get to see uh, all the internship and present or apprenticeship positions that are currently out there across North, uh, sorry, North America. I'm so excited to be here. That's what it is. So, <laughs> so you get to see all the opportunities that are out there. If you just type in apprenticeship or internship, you'll get to see some of those uh, job opportunities. But after you go through, you know, onboarding uh, job specific training, we want to make sure that everybody's safe and uh, capable. And we have awesome training to facilitate that. You're pretty much treated as a regular employee in that sense of we've upskilled you, we've trained you. Now we create trust and collaboration through the relationship formed. Um, so with, uh, you know, anybody that's working in the server shop, again, working alongside our uh, technicians day in and day out, again, that mentorship is so key in getting further interest and knowledge into the industry, learning from somebody like John himself, who has been in the industry for uh, throughout his career, mentors always want to share their knowledge with others. And that's really important. And, you know, I think all of us on this panel today would really highlight the importance of that apprentice and mentor relationship too. And again, with whatever departments they, uh, they end up working in within our dealer network, um, you know, a really good way to get, uh, get your hands uh, on the, sorry, on the iron and uh, really get to see what the job is day in and day out as a, you know, pretty much a full-time employee while you're working there. Yeah, that's a great point. And I know Griff, you pointed out the QR code. We had one comment from a student that it wasn't working. It's just because his, his box is small, everyone with all the other panelists. So what we've done is we've actually dropped that link uh, into the chat. So uh, you can pin Griff if you wanna see him up on the full screen. Yeah. Go ahead and do that with any of us if you'd like, um, but that'll help the QR code. Otherwise just pull that right out of the chat. But uh, thank you for continuing things for us, Griff. I'm now gonna head over to Shelly. Uh, so Shelly, we've spoken about the fact that you're representing all kinds of apprenticeship opportunities. Um, so again, generally speaking, how does a student or a professional get involved in an apprenticeship and start learning which ones are out there, maybe with your clients? You are currently on mute, Shelly. There you go. <laughs> okay, now. So there are so many different ways. Um, and, you know, I think Alex said it and, you know, Jason even mentioned it. You don't have to have a career, I mean, a, a, a college degree um, to be an intern to, uh, in, in some respects, uh, even an apprentice. An apprenticeship really um, is for those folks who, who don't, in many cases, want to go down that path. Um, and example, the apprenticeship program that uh, IBM is running for our clients um, for a mainframe sysadmin role um, those, if you, that's a, a year long apprenticeship program. And after the program finishes in that year, um, the apprentice will accomplish 45 college credit hours from that mainframe sys admin framework. So that's 80% of a degree. And most of our clients and, and many probably here on the, on the call with me today, um, have tuition assistance, you know, reimbursement and, and such like that. So many clients do offer that. So if that's something that you're interested in doing it and maybe just not afforded the opportunity at this time, or it's not something you're interested in at this time, um, you can take the apprenticeship route and still have, you know, the opportunity later to get, uh, you know, and meet your, go take, get credit, the college credits and, um, you know, finish it uh, with tuition assistance later from different clients. But um, from an IBM perspective, um, I'll drop some links here, but IBM.com uh, in our employment, you can read all about internships and apprenticeships. 
and so you need to read, you know, and from a technology standpoint, there's AI, there's cyber, there's blockchain, there's Z, which I'm responsible for, right? The mainframe. There's so many that you can get engaged with. And if you don't know what any of that is now, learn, grow. I saw several of the questions, you know, can 16 year olds, can 10th grade? Yes, you can get in this now. IBM um, has IBM Z Explore. I'm going to drop it here. Um, this is our no cost um, learning platform. Anyone 16 years and above can go and you can um, take the training and it's really fun and funky and fresh and you get to, you know, learn as you go and you'll see if this is something from a technology path, uh, mainframe sys admin, uh, data analysis and, and uh, programming, if it's really something that you want to do. And if you go through that and excel and, and it's something that you think you can really do as a career, by all means, you know, go and broaden. There's so many opportunities with so many of us here on the call today, so many clients. You just, you know, have that, take advantage of what we're saying, you know, connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, we also, as IBM, we have a student hub. And so I'm going to put that uh, link here as well. Join the student hub. It's no cost. And we always have opportunities. If we're going to be um, at a uh, uh, high school or college uh, near you, you can come and listen to us, meet us, um, learn more about what it is. But we always are offering different sessions and different things that you can get engaged with and start to learn. The biggest thing, learn and grow and seek out what you may want to do. And all of us here will help you. So that's the best advice I can give. <laughs> advice. And thank you, Shelly. You hit on again, kind of the earn while you learn, you really um, touched on the learn aspect and the college credits that you, that you touched on. I mean, that's such a key piece um, of apprenticeships and these types of opportunities. So thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, two remaining questions before we do our last round, Robin, and then we'll open it up to you attendees. I've seen a lot of great questions coming in. Um, and the next question we're going to answer aloud, I'm going to uh, pose it to you, Alex, is actually one we've been getting in the last few weeks leading up to this, this launch session. A lot of our attendees and people in general wonder how long is a typical internship or an apprenticeship? So are you able to speak to that specifically to Aflac? Yeah, great question. And I think you hit on this earlier, Sarah, is that a lot of internships are about a semester long. So here at AFLAC, our internships happen in the spring, summer, and fall, and they are all 12 weeks long. So that's really exciting because you get to take that one semester or that 12 week period, three months, and get to step out and try our sales out where you'll work directly with business owners. It's a great opportunity for you to try out different industries in one setting, get to learn more about network networking, professional communication, and I think it's a really great opportunity that a lot of students take advantage of because they're not exactly sure where they want to go. At that young age, it's very difficult to make that decision of where you want to be for the rest of your life. And I know many of you are probably feeling that way too. If you are in the chat, let me know. Because from what I gather, it's hard to make that decision at 16, 17, 18. It's hard to know exactly what you want to do for the rest of your career. So what's great is that you're able to trial out so many different things in a sales internship that you can try and focus on marketing, engineering, talking to all of those business owners to understand the industry behind them and get to have that trial run every time you have a conversation. So it's really great to have that 12 week opportunity. And if you're loving it after, we are able to talk about continuing on and looking at management tracks. Well, that was a good carrot at the end there. Very exciting. Thank you so much, Alex, for answering that one for us. An important question. And of course, it differs um, depending on the internship or an apprenticeship, but that's a great range. And thank you for sharing that, Alex. All right, John, back over to you. You shared with us earlier some great advice and some of the skills that a future <clears throat> apprentice or an intern may need or just professionally um, what people should kind of uh, have soft skill wise and technically even. But the last question I'll ask before we do a round robin with everyone is what advice do you have for students in finding the right internship or apprenticeship for them? Not just finding one, but finding one that they're going to be a good fit for and that they'll be successful in. So there's 
such thing as a positive learning experience and a negative learning experience. And each one is valid. Uh, I'll give you an example. My niece went to college and she wanted to be a teacher. And in her freshman year, she took an internship with an after-school program in the community. By the end of that semester, she knew she did not want to be a teacher. That is a negative learning experience, but very positive at the same time, because she knew she this is not for her. She went on to become a nurse, and that's all good. So how do you find a right internship or apprenticeship program? You're going to have to do some research. I know earlier on it was said that you know most internships are with businesses. That is true. But don't forget about the nonprofit sector. Don't forget about your chambers of commerce, your realtors associations, your home builders associations. Many of those also look out for, um, they have a need for interns as well. Uh, I used to run the Institute for Service Learning at, at Salisbury University in Maryland. And what we did was we, we took students, whatever their major was, and placed them in the nonprofit community so that they would learn. Now, I've seen questions pop up here and here are a couple of things you need to know about an internship. It is a foot in the door, don't ever forget that. If you do well with an internship, chances are they're going to make you an offer, uh, a permanent offer. So I just wanted to get that, that, question, uh, uh, that question answered. Um, when you're doing an internship, do your research, find out whether this is a paid or an unpaid internship. If it's unpaid, um, you're going to have to probably look local rather than out of your area. If it's paid, then you can broaden your scope. But don't forget, you have to figure out how am I going to live, where am I going to live, uh, gas money, all of that sort of stuff. So, so do the research and, and weigh the pros and cons of doing a local internship versus an apprenticeship away from home. Uh, when you're looking for an apprenticeship, one, uh, one of the things that people do not know about is that every state has an apprenticeship office. So just go to your Google machine and whatever state you're in, put in that state and the word apprenticeship after. You will be directed to the state uh, Office of Apprenticeship. There they will list all of the apprenticeship openings available in different industries. For example, in healthcare, there are um, apprenticeships for patient care technician, for certified nursing assistant, for licensed practical nurse. These will all be listed by the employers. So that's an easy way to find who is the apprenticeship employer or sponsor in your state? With internships, if you're in high school, go to your guidance counselor first if they know of internship opportunities. If you're in college, it's the career services office or your professor. I got my internship because my professor um, pointed out that um, Senator Sarbanes needed an intern. Also, if neither one of those is working for you, look around in your local community, figure out what occupation you are interested in pursuing in an internship, contact the employers directly, either a business or a nonprofit. Um, so don't, don't limit yourself just to businesses because the nonprofit sector um, also needs interns. That was all great advice. I appreciate that you hit on both some of the differences in looking for unpaid versus paid internships and how there could be some limitations between the two. Um, but thank you for all of that in great information. And across the board, this has been a really great way to kick off the next two weeks. We're going to have a lot of different companies and organizations featured, um, but really do appreciate all of your expertise and insights. Um, so the last question that I'll pose to everyone, and the quicker we answer this question, the faster we get into our audience questions, and there are a lot. Uh, we've pulled some out, some general themes that we're, we're receiving in the Q&A in the chat box. 
But the last general question that I'd like to start um, with Alex this time around, what would you say um, is the biggest benefit that comes to mind for participating in an internship or an apprenticeship? So I think John hit this on the head. Uh, he said the foot in the, do the door. That is the biggest thing. I think what you get from an internship is not only a skill set that you're requiring and over that short period of time, but you're getting that networking opportunity. You're building those connections. You're getting your foot in the door in so many places. If you're going to any company, you're going to make those connections with hiring managers, with people across different backgrounds. You can hear from all of these panelists that we all have a different background that we've come from. And we're focusing now on early talent recruiting, but none of us came in the same way. So you have a lot to learn from those around you in your internship. And I just highly recommend that you take the time to get to know those people you're working with because it's very valuable along the line. A great benefit indeed. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Shelly, if you don't mind continuing us, what would you say is the biggest benefit? And it's okay if we all have similar answers. There's a couple of big themes here, but what would you say is the biggest benefit of an internship or an apprenticeship? Honestly, it's the ability to learn something new while you're getting paid to do it. Um, getting that education that, you know, maybe you wouldn't be able, again, be afforded the opportunity to, um, or even, you know, those of you who are in computer science, right? Um, and in enterprise computing today, do they teach you about mainframes? Does anybody know what a mainframe is? Every time you use a debit card, you book a plane, you book a hotel, you are using a mainframe. They're 60 years old. They're not going away. They're going to be a piece of our future, right? They are critical business application. Griff knows. Griff knows they run him too. Um, <laughs> they are a critical business application and every client needs them. So find what makes you happy. Find something that you can get up in the morning, look in the mirror and go, I love my job. And no, you know, it's going to take a while to get there. You're, you're going into something that you don't know about from an apprenticeship standpoint. In IBM, um, we in, in our Franklin apprenticeship program will give you 100 hours of training before you even meet a client. So you know how to talk with them. You know the foundational of mainframe. Um, so you're not going in blindly, but then the rest of the year, you know, once you get hired by a client, interviewed and selected, then you get additional training for the year. So you will grow over that course of, of time in, you know, in your knowledge. So take the leap, find what makes that you can do, find what makes you happy. And, and something in technology like this, um, it's going to be around forever. So the careers that you can have are truly amazing. So find just what your passion is and risk it, go for it. Great advice, thank you, Shelly. Yeah, high paying and stable jobs that we're talking about here. So appreciate that advice, great benefits all around. Uh, Griff, I'll hand it over to you next. If you don't mind sharing what comes to mind is the biggest benefit. Yeah, I think one of the biggest benefits is really getting that, um, you know, it's that early exposure to an area that you're interested in, as well as a company that you're interested. In. You don't have to wait four years and then finally uh, decide, hey, I didn't want to do this after all. It gives you that upfront exposure, as well as, you know, the skills and experiences that you have during these internships and apprenticeships. Those are skills that transcend for life. I mean, every day I pull back, I pull something that I learned back when I was a service technician during my apprenticeship that still values in the decisions I make today to help drive our strategy, to work on my old pickup or even fix things around my house. So you'll kind of see that you start to pull out a success piece from everything that you learn and then you learn how to apply that in other parts of your life. And that I think to me is one of the things that really helps everybody not just advance in their own career, advance in their own life. And part of you know becoming a full-fledged adult in the workforce, it's that real world experience that gives you, gives you that exposure. Thank you, Griff. That was a great mention. Yeah, a lot of these opportunities, especially if you're if you're starting young and really exploring a new industry hands-on, those are transferable skills throughout the entirety of your career. So that's a great benefit. Uh, I love that we've had different ones so far. No pressure, John. Uh, is there a benefit that you'd like to echo or an additional benefit that comes to mind for participating in one of these opportunities? With an internship and, and with a, an apprenticeship, you're, you're developing your knowledge, skills, and abilities, which you can transfer elsewhere. 
if you so choose. Um, you know, I looked up <clears throat> the median salary for a teacher for your degree is 40 to 41,000. Median salary for an electrician, 55,000. Debt free. So really do consider an apprenticeship when you're, when you're um, plotting your career pathway. Um, the, the internships are brilliant because they're a foot in the door, they're a resume builder, but also think about it from an employer's point of view. I don't know whether you know this, but it costs an employer a lot of money to hire one individual. If you are an intern, you have a foot in the door, they get to know you very well, the chances are you would have first dibs on any opportunity that came up. That is the value of an internship. I saw another question posed there about uh, apprenticeship. Is there an age limit? The US Department of Labor says a minimum age is 16. The truth of the matter is most employers won't look at you until you're 17 or 18 for an apprenticeship program. Um, is there an upper limit age limit? No. Um, there are plenty of new industries uh, starting wind turbine technician, solar installer, electric vehicle um, transformation person. I, I read it where there is a, now you can buy a kit to turn your car from combustion engine into an EV car. There are tons of new opportunities coming up for you all. So um, just be aware that internships or apprenticeships are a great starting point. Um, uh, an apprenticeship is a career pathway, so that takes you up the ladder pretty quickly um, over four years, two to four years in whatever profession it's in. An internship is a little bit longer, but it gets your foot in the door and it can definitely help you get a job. Thank you, John. Yeah, it is an ideal starting place, but uh, also a good midway, a good stopping point if you want to change careers or explore. We actually just saw uh, Jennifer, I'm going to call you out. You just shared in the chat that um, 49 and currently in an internship, which is incredible. Uh, we've had different people adding into the chat their ages and where they are in their internships and apprenticeships across different industries. So they're out there. Um, thank you for sharing that. All right, so we are gonna keep this panel going if everyone is okay until 7.05, that gives us time to answer a few other questions. If anyone needs to drop, we totally understand. Um, but now we're gonna move into our audience sourced questions. What else can we answer with about eight minutes left? So we're gonna do quick fire questions. I'm gonna pose the question aloud. Whoever wants to take it, please do. Uh, and then we will close out today's launch session by handing it over to my colleague, Jason. He's going to award the prize. So hope you stayed tuned in. It looks like pretty much everyone has. All right. So some of the questions we have are about these opportunities. Other are just general and professional advice. So I'm going to ask a combination of the two. One question we had from Kayla is how can creativity be used within an organization or business or specifically in an internship or apprenticeship? Is there anyone who'd like to take that question? I'll take a stab at it. Uh, creativity, um, and somebody wrote in earlier on that they were an artist and uh, a budding artist. Um, think about marketing. Um, that is some of the most creative components of businesses uh, and nonprofits out there at the minute. Um, there are art institutes in many, many communities. Think about interning there to develop connections. Uh, creativity is something that we all need um, in every business because, you know, a lot of times people get into linear thinking and say, this is how it's always been done. So you need out of the box thinkers um, in, in every, every field, every profession. It's a great I would answer. love to piggyback if I'm able. Yeah. Um, I love that. And I think that creativity is needed in every setting. I think the biggest thing I've, I've learned, even though I haven't been in the professional world that long, is always speak up. If you have those creative ideas, no matter what your setting is, your internship or apprenticeship, make sure you, your voice is heard. If you have a great idea, 
don't sit in the back. Make sure that you say it. I love that advice. Thank you, John. Thank you, Alex. We mentioned marketing, uh, graphic design companies. They have internships. There's a lot of opportunities out there for those that are creative. Um, all right. So the next question that I'm going to uh, pull from the audience is from Ryla, who's wondering, are internships and apprenticeships helpful when applying to colleges? So focusing on the high schoolers tuning in, will this help you when I'm seeing nodding heads across the board? Who wants to take it? I would say 100%. I mean, whether you're seeking a job or an opportunity to continue your educational experience, internships are going to be a real way to help you stand out amongst the pack. Um, really what we see right now, and kind of specifically in the industries that we serve at Caterpillar, there's an imbalance right now. So we have this high value for education, but not enough for real world, real world experience with apprenticeships and internships. This needs to be rebalanced because to me, if we have different learner types, that's audio, kinesthetic, visual, that means we have different success types. So that means we have to allow different paths of entry to pursue whatever area of interest they have. So internships are going to help you really do that, as well as, you know, uh, continue your passions. Maybe it does ignite you to follow things further within your educational path. So what happened for me, and it, it was a slam dunk when I uh, put it, finally figured out how to put it all together, too. Great feedback. Okay, thank you so much, Griff. Well, we have Four minutes left and I have two other questions I think I'll pose. Um, and these are actually less focused on internships and apprenticeships. We're gonna be hearing about them all throughout the next two weeks. And everyone on this panel has done a great job pulling back the curtain, not only on what to expect, how to find these, what types there are out there and general um, advice and uh, tips and tricks. So the last two questions are just kind of more professional advice um, and general. We have one from Leonardo who's wondering, um, he says, good afternoon. What advice do you have to grow at your company? I would love to take this one. I think that some advice I have to grow at your current company. So if you're already at an organization that you love, make sure you take extra opportunities. If you are offered a project, jump on it. Say yes. Say yes to so everything, anything that's offered your way. Make sure that's the word you use. I think another thing is reaching out to people in other departments, cross communication. If there are people, let's say you're working on a project and you're not sure how to take the marketing side of it, or the graphic design, that's not your element. Reach out to the people in those areas, even if you don't know them. That's a great way to learn about new areas of opportunity. And it also gets your name out there within the organization. So I think the biggest thing is just saying yes to new things and making sure that you are connecting with others. Yeah, I would chime in, what, uh, try and find a mentor within the organization that you work with and ask questions. Alex raised this uh, earlier on. Never be shy. Um, and even if it's, you know, you're looking for a critique on how you're performing, that is valuable too. So uh, one good way to, to, um, to get ahead in, in different organizations is to have a mentor. Um, and have them work with you. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, again, great, great advice, Alex. And thank you, John. Um, on Tala, we have exclusive mentorship program. So students, make sure you're, you're logging back into Tala, keeping that updated um, so we can share any mentorship programs that we're launching this fall. We're actually about to be kicking off too. Um, so that's great advice. Uh, last question before we wrap up this panel uh, and send everyone off to eat dinner or whatever they have planned this evening. Uh, Victor wants to know, and this is always kind of a fun one to ask, uh, and if multiple people want to answer, we have two minutes. So what are some tasks or anything in general you didn't expect when you landed your job or began in your current industry? Like that. I'm uh, 23 years with IBM and I actually started on the mainframe and I had no idea what it was. I uh, came into a role, I learned it, I continued to grow, I continued to do other things. Um, I went on to learn disaster recovery and project management, education and training, and I was a COO and did many, many different things. And so companies like this, you know, like Apple, I mean, all of us here 
they allow you the opportunity to grow. And even though you come in to do one thing, you get to continue on and grow in your career and learn what you know you really love to do. Um, so I did many different things in my 23 years so far, but I'm right now back in doing IBM Z systems, which is mainframe. So I've kind of done full circle, um, but you never know. And so that's the great thing about, you know, as you just get ready to start um, getting on with someone, just, you know, landing that, what everybody said here, do your best, do it well, continue to grow, learn, make those, you know, connections, network, um, because master your profession. That's kind of my motto because you can have a village and, and network and all these folks that will help you out there, but you are the one who will, you know, really further your career, learn, grow, make connections and go to events like this. I mean, there's companies here like Tallow, they want to help you. This is what they're here for and doing tonight. So um, there's lots of ways you just have to be willing to do it. Thank you, Shelly. Griff, is there anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I just want to add, and Shelly kind of talked a lot about it. And it's been a theme throughout the conversation. We talk about mentoring, we talk about um, networking as well. But to me, that really what that is, is creating those connections, creating those relationships. Uh, throughout your career, you're going to find relationships is what gets the work done and helps you leverage that relationship. It can be a fun task or sometimes a very difficult task you have to ask somebody of. If they like you and trust you, they're going to be more likely to do that. And those are the things that help build your brand, get your name known out there. Um, I don't want anybody ever to think that it's seen as, you know, being a teacher's pet or being too much. Uh, management, leadership, anybody in the organization is going to see that you are passionate and want to support and enable your success. So that's what the course you need to follow. And again, on that following your passions really is as long as you're following your passions and doing the best you can to learn, success is going to guarantee itself. Yeah, well said. That's a, a perfect way. Thank you, Griff, to close this out. This has been a lot of fun. I love hosting panels. Uh, we did tech run throughs and I, I knew we were going to have a great conversation. So a major thank you, Griff, Alex, John, Shelley, for your time um, this evening. This has been really informative and a special way to kick off this two week long event series. So from all of us at Tallow and all of the attendees tuning in, we thank you for your time and all this great information. All right, well, we have only a few minutes left. If you've stayed tuned in for the last hour, thank you. Uh, we hope it was beneficial. So many great questions coming in and we appreciate all of the engagement. I am now going to pass over the hosting uh, responsibilities to Jason. He's gonna announce the uh, prize giveaway, um, our winner, and a few details about our next upcoming sessions and events. So I will pass it over to you, Jason. Thank you again to all the wonderful panelists. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Sarah. I just wanna say thank you again to the panelists, Alex, Shelley, John, Griff. That was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing some of your personal stories, some of those insights, answering questions from the audience. Um, so nice of you to take time out of your day. And so to all of you in the audience, we're going to be sending out a recording of the event to all of you. So keep an eye out for that. And then I love to see Carlos saying I learned a lot in this session. I'm going to drop this in chat. So Again, this link is the link to internship and apprenticeship week. You can learn so much more about opportunities that our partners like, like Affleck, like IBM, like Caterpillar um, have to offer. So click there, check those out. And now I know you are all interested to hear who's won the Fire Tablet, and that is Ryla. So Ryla, uh, congratulations. It's because you asked some really amazing questions in chat. So thank you for participating. Thank you to all of the members that participated today. We really appreciate your time. Uh, Ryla, I'll put the email in chat, but just email community at tallow.com. You know, put that in chat. And then thanks again to everyone for uh, taking this first step with us on internship and apprenticeship week. And we look forward to seeing you more uh, in these next two weeks. So thank you everyone. And we'll see you soon.